Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to add an outline around your subjects using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.18 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to my GIMP Help Center app, ebooks like my GIMP Book of Layers, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium membership with a 7-day free trial, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the photo I'll be using for today's tutorial. This is a free photo from Pexels. Just click this little arrow here. I went with the large version, so the 1920 by 1280, and click free download. So here is the final composition. You can see I have the subject of the photo outlined here with the white outline. I've also blurred out the background. So if I shift click, this was the original. Shift click again, here is the final. There are a decent amount of steps in this tutorial, but nothing that you guys can't handle. So let's dive in here. I'm going to start by opening up the original photo. So I'll go to File, Open Recent in my case. For you guys, File Open and search for the file on your computer. But I'll just click on this photo here. And this is going to ask me if I want to convert this to GIMP's built-in sRGB color space. I'll hit Convert. Here's the original photo. The first thing I did here, I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel, is I got rid of these flyaway hairs. So you can see she has hair sticking up in some places here, and that's just going to stand out once we add the outline. It'll kind of stick out of the outline and not look as good. So if you guys don't have this problem, you don't need to worry about it. But in this case, and I think this is very common, especially with female models, you've got hair sticking out. So what I did is I started by duplicating the original photo, and I'll rename this one main photo and rename this layer original, hit the enter key, and make sure I'm on my main photo layer. So first I got rid of these hairs, and I did that with the heel tool for starters. So over here in my group tools, you'll see the clone tool by default. Just click and hold that until you get to the heel tool or press H on your keyboard. And I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. Holding the control key, I'll click, and that's going to give me a source area, and then I can paint with that source area on the areas where I want to get rid of the hair, so the destination. And I can just continue doing that, or I can click and release, and that's just going to reset my source area back to where I originally clicked, and that just makes it easier to go through here and get rid of some of these hairs. So these hairs that I'm getting rid of with the heel tool are pretty thin, but in cases where you have thicker hairs like right here, you may need to use the clone tool. So to use the clone tool, you can hit the C key on your keyboard or just click and hold here where you had the heel tool and grab the clone tool. And then what I like to do is hold the control key, grab a source area and just paint with the clone tool over those thicker hairs. And we can pretty much in this case I'll hit Control Z. If it's too light, make sure that the uh, color is matching there, so you might have to hit Control Z to undo that. But I'm basically just going to hold the Control key, click source areas where the colors are similar, and this helps me get rid of these thicker hairs. At least it starts to uh, help me with that process. And I'm making sure this is a fairly straight line as I'm getting rid of it. We're going to blur this at the end, so it doesn't matter too much how perfect this process is. It will get hidden pretty well by that blur. You can hold the shift key to draw that in straight line mode. So there you can see we've gotten rid of that. And maybe this part right there as well. So coming back over here, and I'm going to fast forward through this, and also I'm going to not cover this entire process because I did do this earlier, and I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to getting rid of flyaway hairs, so check that out. But I will show you guys a good chunk of this just so you get the idea. So hold the control key. You can see I'm switching now to a different source area. Here it's a little lighter, so it matches this part. So 
So obviously I still have a lot of work to do here, but if I come over here to file open recent, in my case, I've already performed this action. So if I hold control and zoom in, you guys can see this was the final result that I created here so I can hide it. There's the before, there is the after. So hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out. The next step is we need to outline our subject using the foreground select tool. And so I'll come over here to my lasso tool here and you can see the last item here in the tool group is the foreground select tool. And now I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. Not too much here. Actually, I might have to stay here. But now what I'll do is click and drag my mouse and I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to the foreground select tool. So check that out if you want an in-depth look. But I'm going to loosely outline the foreground object, which is going to be my model. And I'll hit the enter key. So now we've selected the model and I'm going to increase the size of my brush using the right bracket on my keyboard. And now make sure this is set to draw foreground. And with my paintbrush, and right now I have this set to a white color, I'm going to now select the foreground object. So any part of the model here. and I'll release my mouse and that'll show me the object area that I've selected for my foreground. I'll come in here and just make sure we've selected some of these larger areas here. It doesn't have to be exact right now. Use my space bar and my mouse to move up. So just make sure I'm selecting the bulk of the hair and I can decrease the size of my brush using the left bracket on my keyboard. All right, so once we've gotten that nice and cleaned up, I can hit the enter key. And that will select my foreground here. And you can hold control and zoom in. So anywhere that you see that really needs to get cleaned up, you can continue drawing with the foreground draw mode selected here. Or if too much of the area has been selected as the foreground, you could switch over to draw background. Again, I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to this tool if you want a more in-depth look. I'm just kind of scanning the areas that I want to maybe paint in or paint out. In this case, I'm painting that out. So that's becoming the background again. And maybe I'll come over to draw foreground and paint some of this in. And switch to draw background, paint some of that out. Decrease the size of my brush, hold control and zoom in. This will have to be cleaned up. This will be the last thing I clean up here. All right, so not perfect, but that's gonna do. So once everything's been cleaned up, I'll hit the enter key and that will draw a selection area around that area we just isolated with our foreground select tool. And now I'll come back over here, click on the foreground select tool and hold. And now I'll choose the free select tool, which is the F key on the keyboard. And now I'll hold control and zoom in. So what we need to do is clean up the larger areas. This is a pretty quick process, but if I come over here, you'll see we could change the mode of the free select tool. So in this case, I'll go with subtract from current selection. And I'm just going to draw with this free select tool the area that I want to subtract. So I don't want this as part of my foreground. So we've cleaned that up there. You can hold control and zoom in. You can clean up these lines if you want to. So in this case, I'm gonna switch over to add to the current selection and you'll see there's a modifier key for this. So shift for add to current selection and control to subtract. So I'll be using those modifier keys from now on. But now I'm gonna add these to the current selection cause a bit too much of her shirt was not selected. And same with down here. And you guys can of course do this manually with the paths tool. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to mastering the paths tool. So definitely check that out. So hold the control key and we're just going to minus this out of the selection area. And then we're gonna add this back to the selection area. Same with right here. And then the last parts we're gonna clean up are going to be the hair. And by the way, you can tell if I'm adding to the current selection or subtracting because there's a little icon on my mouse pointer here above the lasso icon, and that's showing a plus sign right now, which means I'm adding. And if it's a minus sign, that means I'm subtracting.
All right, so once we have everything selected here, I'll hold control and zoom in. Let me just get this one last piece. Hit the enter key. So once we have everything selected, I'll hold control and zoom out with my mouse wheel. And now I'll come over here to the paths tab and I'm going to create a path from this selection. So I'll come down here and click this icon in the bottom right corner. It says selection to path when I hover over it. So I'll click on that icon and that's going to create a path from the selection, but I'm not going to deselect this yet. I need to cut out this image and repaste it as a brand new layer. You guys will see why in a minute. So I'll come back over here to the layers panel, make sure I'm on the main photo layer, which the names of this got reverted back because I switched files. So let me just retype this out. So make sure I'm on the main photo layer, control C to copy and control V to paste. That's going to paste this as a floating selection or a pasted layer. So now you'll see some options highlight down here. So I'm gonna go with the create a new layer icon here and that'll put this on its own new layer. So now if I hide the other two layers, you can see we've singled out the image of the woman here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is create another new layer. And this one I'll name outline and make sure it's filled with transparency and click okay. Then I'm going to click and drag the outline layer below the pasted layer and come back over here to the paths tab. So now our selection is gone, but that's all right. That's why we created this path so I can unhide the path and you guys can see what this looks like. If I hold control and zoom in, we can grab the paths tool and if there's any path we want to delete, we can click on this with the paths tool and you'll see various nodes showing up here from the path we drew. So for example, if I click on this node and hit the backspace key and this one hit the backspace key, that allows me to get rid of these nodes here or these parts of the path. So hold control and zoom out. So that's another way to clean up that line. But once our path is drawn, we can either come over here if we're using the path tool and hit stroke path, or if we're not using the path tool, we can just make sure we're clicked on this path and come down here and click this option here to paint along the path. It's going to perform the same action. So here we have the ability to choose what type of stroke we want to paint this with. So this stroke is going to be the main outline going around our subject in our photo. So I want this to be a solid color. You guys can make it a pattern if you want or whatever. But with solid color selected, I'm going to choose my line width as 30 pixels. You guys can choose a different unit here and you can also make this larger or smaller. And you can also choose a line style. So if you wanted to do something like a dotted pattern or a dash pattern, you can choose from any of these options. I'm going to stick with a straight line here, which you can choose from these options. You can also paint with the paintbrush if you'd like or any of the paint tools by checking this option and choosing from the paint tool options. But whatever color you have set here as your foreground color is going to be the color of the outline. So make sure you set the color to whatever color you'd like. I'm gonna go with white, so I'll hit cancel. And then when you're ready, of course, making sure if I come over here to the layers panel that I'm on my outline layer, I can click stroke and that will add an outline to my subject here. So now I'll come over to the paths tab, hide that path. And let me just grab the move tool here. And there you could see the outline around our subject. Something else you could do is blur the background image behind our subject so that it stands out a little more. So this is going to be a good case for something like a YouTube thumbnail for your videos. So if I come over here to the layers tab and come down here to the main photo layer, I can go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and we can crank this up until we get the value we like. So you can go way up or just a little bit like that and click OK. And there's our final image. All right, so that's it for my tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you can check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.